It's so great uh, to see you. And um, I'm joining you today. Uh, my name is Tara Lynn Fern, Mila Judge. Uh, I'm Snake Clan. I'm a member of the Wabanaki Confederacy. Many of you know, uh, know me, but if you're new to this journey, um, the traditional homelands of my people is I'll just keep the, it on folks, my, the Atlantic my... provinces of Canada and down into the northeastern United States. But today, my two feet are planted in a different location, and I'm joining you uh, from these beautiful lands of the Cherokee, Chickasaw, uh, Shawnee, and Osage peoples down in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm in a hotel room here, and um, my son had to get his appendix out. So I'm uh, going on day seven. He's healing well with lots of prayers from, from everyone uh, across the nation. Um, but that's where I'm joining you from today. And I'm really grateful and honored to be able to uh, be on these beautiful lands and uh, to really facilitate uh, his healing and well-being here. Um, so what I'd love, I'd invite you to maybe share where your two feet are planted in the chat room. We have over 200, we have 200 and I think 25 people that have joined this eight month journey everywhere, all over the world in six different continents, many different countries, but most importantly, um, from little nodes of connection through our earth mother where our two feet are planted. So please let us know if you're comfortable and share where your two feet are planted so that we can really be reminded of our connection uh, to each other. So we're so excited about this journey. I'm gonna say that every session because we have such a powerhouse of uh, guests that are, are joining us today. And I'm gonna hand it over to Tatiana and um, to just uh, further welcome us and then we'll begin our opening. So Tatiana. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, hello everyone, welcome. It's, it's yeah, really special to be here with you all. Um, and so I, I will just begin by saying my two feet are planted on the traditional territory of the Kanakahage people, um, otherwise known as Montreal in Canada. Um, and we have a really wonderful special guest joining us today. Nora Bateson is, um, is with us and we'll be um, opening. We have Grandmother Diane who will open us um, and land us here together. And then we will invite Nora into a conversation so we can hear all her brilliance and wisdom. And then we will have lots of time for um, some breaking out and having some connection and discussion together. And then we'll come back to a large group plenary for reflections um, and insights and sharing that's before we go. So that's the arc of our time with you all. Um, and so before we get moving, um, I'd like to uh, pass it to Terry Lynn, who will take us to the opening. Thank you. Oh, well, Alan, uh, Tatjana, um, those of you that joined us last uh, session, um, you, we were so privileged. We are so privileged to have grandmother Gachandagwas Diane Longboat uh, join us on this journey. Um, and so I'd love to extend a beautiful invitation for you, uh, Gachandagwas, to begin us in a good way and, and uh, speak those words, those beautiful words that come before all else to prepare us in a good way, uh, in, rooted in care for our time together this evening. So I'd like to invite you to open us. Thank you so much, Tara Lynn and Tatiana. It's lovely to be with all of you. My, uh, my, my Mohawk name is Gahandagwas. And uh, I say to you today, my name is Gahandagwas. I'm Mohawk Turtle Clan. And I am coming to you from Six Nations Grand River Territory, south of Toronto, Canada. I want to say how grateful I am to Sungwe Dison, our creator, for giving us this opportunity to connect all across the world in a very special way. We, our people call this internet the cobweb, and it was prophesied that we would have this, um, and it was seen 300 years earlier. So I want to offer some words of opening for us, the way that we do it um, in those important meetings, the every ceremony, social gatherings, meetings of importance, 
because we know as simple human beings, we come from many walks of life. We come from many living scenarios where we're challenged every single day. And to be able to bring our hearts and minds together to do this work is so important. So these words clear your mind, they open your heart, they energize you, and they give you that opportunity to connect your spirit to the unseen, to the higher powers, to the ancestors. And so our people offer these words in the morning at sunrise to start the day. And, uh, and sometimes during the day, when we have gatherings like this, there are words that are added to the invocation. So I'll give you a, a shortened version of, of this invocation called the Ahodong Galiwadekwa. Nyawa sangwe di sangkanalunkwa. Gahandakwa siyunyats. Creator, the, the maker of all things, the one who has created all life, we give thanks this day for the sacredness of that breath of life for one more day. We honor you, creator, and thank you for the vision that you had, the thought that went out into the universe of creating a place, a jewel in the universe that would mirror that place of peace in the sky world. Nyawa for visiting the most beautiful places in the universe, gathering dust and pollen and swirling it together to form our mother, the earth. We give thanks this day for the fresh waters, the salt waters, the rain waters, and the birth waters of the earth. We give thanks this day and honor the oldest form of life on the earth, the plant life. And in our area, the lead of, of all those trees is the maple tree. And it is preparing now to, uh, to give us medicine that will cleanse our bodies after a long winter. And it will also give us that sweetness of life, which is our, our maple syrup and our maple candy. We honor this day, all of the medicine plants, all the food plants, the three sisters, the corn, the beans, and the squash. We honor and lift up this day, all the animal life that is on the earth, those animals are brothers and sisters to us in some form, our clan systems. We honor them and lift them up to you and say thank you for creating such a, a beautiful family of animal life. We also honor all the bird life, and especially those that, like the eagle, that carry our prayers to the Creator. Carry, carry our prayers because the, that eagle is the strongest of the birds all of the, the singers the, among those birds, those that come to us in the springtime, those that have stayed with us throughout the winter. We also lift up and honor this day all those living beings that are in the waters of the earth, magnificent whales that hold the wisdom of creation and the grandmother turtle who holds up mother earth on her back. And we understand that to be the truth from the time of creation when there was only one land mass. This day we have in our area, magnificent white thunderbirds that are moving about bringing snow and ice. The four grandfather winds moving about the earth and refreshing her. We give thanks this day to all of those beings that are in the celestial world. The stars that represent our ancestors, the grandmother moon who takes care of fertility and the coming of new life the pulling of the waters and tides so that all the life that is underneath the water can also receive its nourishment. We honor and give thanks this day to our elder brother, the sun, walking across the sky from east to west each day, never failing in service to the creator to restore life here, renew life here and help life thrive on mother earth. There is a highway that joins the natural world to the high heavens of the spirit world called the Milky Way. New life comes on one side of that highway as the unborn entering this world and coming here to become a human being so the spirit can grow and it can evolve, it can meet challenges and it can become the very best that it can be by bringing its gifts into the world to create harmony. We give thanks this day and honor 
all of those souls, those spirits that are leaving the earth. They have finished their work here and they are returning to that place of peace where we were created. We give thanks and honor to them this day. And we say how grateful we are for life and for that experience of life here on Mother Earth. We see on the other side of that beautiful Milky Way, the fires of our ancestors that are burning there. And we say how grateful we are that they pray for us. They know what it is to be a weak and an imperfect human being. They pray for us and they help us. They provide guidance to us in dream and vision. In that spirit world also, the Creator's Council Fire, seated there are great ones, leaders of medicine societies. They are also profound spiritual beings who assisted the Creator with the whole process of creation. We thank them. For some of them stayed here on the earth with us and others went back to finish their work in the spirit world. We give thanks to the Creator this day, that great mystery, neither male nor female, but a great loving power. And we say how grateful we are, Creator, that we can join together across the face of Mother Earth, that we have a great teacher who's joined us, that Nora is well and at peace, and that she is here to generously share her wisdom and her experience with us. So we ask this day, Creator, that for every single person who is here, who has joined us here, we, th we thank you. We pray this day for you, for your family, for your communities, and for the nations that you come from. We pray for healing, for love, and for peace. So with these words, I present to you some way to some our family and our intention for this time together. Yawa, miigwech. Thank you very much. Back to you, Tara Lynn. Oh, Yawa Goa, uh, Grandmother Diane for oh, just the my physical body, the presence of my physicalness just changes. Um, when you speak to all of creation and all of our relations and remind us in gratitude of how we are connected uh, to the cosmos through all of the seen and unseen beings. And so uh, Yawa to you for, um, for sharing and reminding us uh, in such a good way. And, you know, this today's session is about landing in our bodies and we wanted to uh, make sure that we uh, are mindful of our relationship of the sacred fire. And so we want, we, I want to just acknowledge uh, the sacred fire that's burning at Soul of the Mother Lodge and remembering how we began this journey and the being in relationship with that sacred fire and, and being in the presence of that sacred fire connects us to a greater consciousness, as I have understood from you, uh, Grandmother Diane. And I remember when you, uh, in some of your teachings that you had said, you know, we have this physical connection uh, and a physical ability to, to connect to a greater consciousness through that sacred fire. And you also shared that how our body is like an antenna that perceives the whole cosmos. And I think that it's just, I'm so mindful and present with that, uh, that uh, sharing that you shared with me about that because tonight's session, landing in our bodies, uh, dancing with the seen and unseen and, and sort of questioning and wondering um, what is possible as we journey through, through this eighth month journey, but also in our dialogues and decisions tonight and our discussions. And I think about you know, how our consciousness sort of informs itself through our creation. So I'm just sensing this beautiful artistry uh, in woven throughout this, this beautiful dialogue and in our invitation with Nora. So Nyawa for opening us in a good way and um, reminding us of where we are in the journey, tending to our spirit, awaking to our consciousness physically, uh, spiritually, uh, emotionally, and mentally, and also in preparation for tonight's discussion. So I'd like to invite Tatiana to um, enter us in, bring us in a little bit deeper with our beautiful guest, Nora, who uh, 
We are so excited to have joining us today. And I'm trying not to fangirl, but uh, I'm so excited on many different levels, Nora, as I know many of our uh, folks that joined us today are as well. So over to you, Tatiana. And I'm so uh, grateful for all of you participating this evening. Thanks, Taylor. And thank you, Grandmother Diane, for, for opening us and landing us here. Um, the, the theme today, interconnectivity and landing in our bodies, I think there's many ways that we can come into this conversation. Um, and uh, I encourage everyone just to reflect on what this means for you personally um, as, we, as we engage in dialogue um, together. Um, and I want to invite everyone in, in just to practice and ground us. Um, I'd like to invite everyone into just a pause and a moment of breathing together um, to help us land together um, and, and to help just ground us into our being. So it won't be long. Um, if you are comfortable, more comfortable turning off your, um, your video while we do this, please feel free to do that. Um, and if you're comfortable closing your eyes, I invite you just to, just to settle in to your seat, to close your eyes, and just to pay attention to and notice your breathing, your inhaling, and your exhaling here together. You can take a few breaths together. And while you're doing this, just do a scan of your body, scan through and just notice, notice where your breath goes in your inhale. Notice any stress or tension you might be holding And take a breath into that tension and, and or stress or any pain that you might be feeling. And with that breath, just give it a little more space and a little more room, some expansion. And as you scan your body, feel your buttocks sinking into your seat. Notice your feet planted on the ground and take a breath into all the way down to your feet. Become aware of your feet planted on the earth. The earth that we're all connected to together. And breathe in. And let's take a breath into our heart center and feel a release around our hearts. And one more, maybe give your shoulders a little roll, bringing awareness to your shoulders, a little shake. And then I'll invite you to come back and open your eyes and join the circle. Thank you. All right, so what a delight um, to be having Nora here with us today. Um, by way of introduction, I just would like to share that Nora has been, for me, one of the most inspiring voices in the systems field over the last couple of years um, through the pandemic. And her way of thinking brings together art and science of systems change. And she challenges the field um, in a beautiful way to not be perpetuating the very systems that are harmful that we're trying to shift. Um, she is a woman thought leader in a very male dominated space. Um, and her work um, around warm data has been, um, I would say, um, leading in the field in terms of embodying complexity. So a little bit uh, about Nora, she's the president of the Bateson Institute, um, a thought leader, an artist, a writer, an educator in the field of complexity. 
She's an author of a book, Small Arcs of Larger Circles, and she directed and produced the award-winning documentary, An Ecology of Mind, which is a portrait of her father, Gregory Bateson. And her work brings the field of biology, cognition, art, anthropology, psychology, and information technology together into a study of patterns in the ecology, in the ecology of living systems. So welcome, Nora. So amazing to have you here with us. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. And thank you for the beautiful opening. Um, that was so lovely. And I feel so much better already. Mm. You know, you've had a, a you've had a big day, so we're grateful that you're sticking around into the evening with us. So I think in this in this conversation, um, we have lots of space that we want to explore. But let's let's begin, given that we're looking at the weaving of care and systems um, in your life and experience. How has care intersected your work? How has care inspired you? Maybe held you back? Um, how do you think about care? in the context of the work that you're doing in the world? I, I wanna start by saying that one of the things I'm most interested in um, and that I care about uh, is the question of where is change? When change happens in a system, where is it? How do we tend to that change? And um, we live in a world that is dominated by the idea that um, it's, it's a mechanistic idea that in order to make change, you change the parts. Um, and that you can declare what you want the change to be, and then you can make a linear strategy to get there. Okay. Um, but we live in a world that's alive. And we are living organisms comprised of other living organisms that are all changing in relation and response all the time. So this question of where is change um, comes into your question about care. And um, you know, one thing about care giving and care receiving is that it is a teacher. It's a teacher um, that, that does not relent um, around what, what kind of time it takes, what sort of attention it takes, how to perceive others and yourself and your relationship in new ways. Um, when you're in a, a time of caregiving, what's happening is that there is change taking place. Maybe it's an illness, maybe it's a child growing up, maybe it's just the daily maintenance of life that you're caring for. But in any case, all of the organisms in the situation are constantly shifting. So care for me is, is also about perception. It's about um, those kind of sensitivities that, um, that we don't maybe use in, in other circumstances. And I think that if I'm honest, that one of the things about care is that it's unrecognized by the systems around us. Um, it's not productive, it's not efficient. Um, you're not getting anywhere. There's no deliverable. You can't really measure it. It's hard to name. And yet, it is a mutual transformation. Being in care, giving and care receiving is a mutual learning with other people and organisms. You can care for all sorts of living things. So for me, care has been, um, I have a lot of kids and um, 
I think that one of the most uh, difficult and important things I learned in my life, I learned from my mother-in-law. And uh, I, I have a habit of marrying musicians. I've done it twice now, so I don't know what that's about, but that's clearly for another show. Um, and so they're on the road all the time. And so that leaves me home to do caregiving. But I'm also a professional person and I'm also, you know, trying to keep it together in the world and, um, and my mother-in-law, she had six kids and she was married. Her, her husband was a musician as well. And I once asked her in, in what I thought was respect and awe. And I said, wow, you know, how did you do this? And it was the one and only time that she responded to me, ice. She came back, she was ice cold. And she said, life was hard and we expected it to be so. And when it wasn't, that was nice. Now, in my world of personal care and time for me and all of this sort of stuff that I learned about, this was a confusing response. I didn't really understand it at first. Um, I've come to realize that her response was one of the greatest gifts I ever received because it actually set me free from feeling like when I didn't get time to myself or when I couldn't give, when I couldn't do the things that I thought I should be doing for me, that I wasn't being deprived of something. And I think it's easy to get into this kind of strange arrangement with the notion of self-care, which is important, um, in, in relation and in, in mutual caregiving. So what I learned from her response gave me this moment of being with my kids, you know, when I had a fever of 102 and my kids were fevering too and they're throwing up all over the place and realizing in those moments, not the pretty little beach moments or the ice cream cone moments, but in those moments, what it means to love. And I, I think that the, the, the strength that I got from that was, um, and still is, a, a great source from which I, I, I draw, you know, from, for every day. I remember my mom said to me, when I had two little babies, 17 months apart at that point. And I was overwhelmed. Papa's on the road. Um, and she said, oh, don't worry. You'll find strength you never knew you had. And she was right. I didn't know that I would find that. But in my learning to give care and to, to, to hold and to uh, heal and to soothe and to play with those children. I actually learned how to um, how to be in my own world in a way that I never had before. I transformed in that caregiving. But this isn't something you can put on your CV. This isn't something that goes on your resume. It's not something you can say, hey, you know, this is my big achievement in life, but let me tell you something. It is absolutely 
some of the biggest achievement I've ever made is in that form of care and giving where it, I was no more. I am in pure service. And um, this is not, um, this is not a, a degradation of self. It's an expansion of self. So I, as you know, I'm really interested in how things move and shift in relationship to each other. I'm really, I'm really studying this relational process. And I think in the coming years and, and now, certainly in the past couple of years, um, some of the greatest possibility and improvisation, the greatest art form around is this question of how do we care for each other? And this is not a script, okay? If it turns into a script, it's gonna get yucky. Um, but if it is an improvisation, if it is about being in the in present, in the, in the moment and highly sensitized to how that mutual care is taking place, um, it, it's a fantastic realm of possibility. Amazing. Um, Tara Lynn, did you have? I just, you know, when I prepared for this, you know, in my own ceremony and preparation, I, I didn't really know where we were going. And you're just touching so many beautiful little heartstrings here uh, for me personally, Nora. And I, I'm thinking about um, one of the questions that came when we were around the sacred fire is how do we shift from being from human beings mm. to humans being and the connection of the action oriented, caring, loving, you know, um, and you're really speaking, speaking to that. And, and I know that many of the participants that are joining us today are our mothers, and now we're talking about mother ing and you know, connect ing and I just think there's this beautiful um, action, you know, you're validating and, and centering the importance of that. And it lines so much within our own teachings about, you know, being physical vessels as women to be able to bring spirit life to, to a physical form to walk on this earth, uh, as one of my teachers, Anabinase, had shared. And so, it's so beautiful. That's what's resonating with me when I hear you speak. And um, I'm also thinking about some of your poems that I've read and, and the reunion poem that resonates with that same vibration uh, to that thinking as well and that sensing and how important uh, it is as an underpinning, as a foundational underpinning, you know, for change that we're all trying to enact individually and collectively. That's what's resonating with me. Um. Yeah, I mean that 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 human being. Um, it you know we're gonna have to help each other remember what that feels like, and and I think that that's. That's really important because it could be an adventure of the self to refine that way of being human, human being. But I think we also have to take responsibility for how we are with each other. In what way do we hold each other trapped? in existing scripts and structures, um, cultural expectations, notions of things like success, identity, um, materialistic and, and actually competitive professional um, judgment of each other. Uh, because
we have to help each other get out of this. And, and it's so easy to, to be un, unaware of what sort of presuppositions of things like credibility or, you know, lovability, wantability, that essentially everybody wants to be respected and loved by the people in around them and in their community and maybe by everybody everywhere. I don't know, but let's just keep it small for now. And what messages, what have they been taught? How have they come to learn to be in the world? So that they learn how to, how to, to do that. And unfortunately, a good many of the things that, that are, are woven into, you know, did you get good grades in school? What level are you at in this, you know, course? And how are you doing there? And what's your title? And what's your car? And what's your address? And all of these things are constantly pulling us out of the ability to perceive one another's complexity. And for me to say, I see you and you are 400 trillion organisms of microbiome. You are, you are your beautiful own self of your own history, your experiences, your family, your heritage, your geographies, your work, your, your, your generation, your gender, your all sorts of contexts that are coming together in who you are and who I am. And I think, you know, for me, one of the things that I have been working with with the warm data work is um, allowing people to participate in, in conversations that show and reveal their own complexity, their own weird and wild and wonderful, complicated selves. So that when they're in relation with others, they might be able to perceive their complexity too. Um, and for me, this is where, where we get to be in being together again. When I am more than one label that you could put on me when you are more than 10 labels that I could put on you when I'm able to just meet you with you know the word care and the word curiosity both come from the word kur which means heart right so to to meet you in care and curiosity of all of the complexity of your being I mean why not actually like what what is the big benefit of not doing that <laughs> i don't know it seems like it just confuses everybody and and you know we get we get short with each other we start to respond to incomplete processes and it hurts you know when people are reductionist when they create a reductionist version of you, it hurts. And you wanna say, but wait, I'm so much more than that. I'm not perfect and I'm learning and I'm, I'm, I don't know who I'll be tomorrow, but I know I'm more than that label. So how we come together in, in that way of being is I think it's, you know, it's pretty unscripted right now. There's, there's not a lot of, um, we don't have a lot of practice doing that. And we don't have a lot of ceremonies for that anymore. There's not a lot of language for that. So this is a moment of kind of being clumsy with it. We don't really know what we're doing. And we're in a world that's changing so fast in so many ways, um, you know, economically, culturally, politically, in the, in the climate and ecologically. 
So who are you? Who am I? And how, who am I now? Who was I 10 years ago? Who am I in my ancestry? Who will I be? And so my, my sense is that in, in respect of that notion of being together, there is also this becoming. Um, so I did write this poem and I'll, I'll put it in the chat and I'll, I'll read it to you. So people ask me all the time, you know, what, what is this warm data stuff? And um, I feel like it's I dangerous down here. to answer things in, in prose when prose makes things flat that aren't flat. So I find that I have to respond in poetry to some things. So what is warm data? Well, it's a reunion. It's a thickening of the unsaid integrity, starting in small fringes that link and recircuit, finding unfound mixtures, re-soaking the okay marinating memories until their softness is sticky vitality, like the richness of soil. The ensembling is teeming with nuances, sticking to other nuances, following entirely undrawable paths. The unusual textures, the surprises in the wordless sea of how we are. The resonances and the rhythms have their own current. In the rich probiotics of fresh tones made together without goals. This is not collaboration, this is composting. This kind of new life is not a restructure, it's a reunion. It's not a plan, it's a nourishing. beautiful. And I think the other poem that sort of speaks to that um, is a poem called Uncut. And I'll put it in the chat. Bing. That works so well. Okay. Uncut. Every note lands in a teapot of other notes. What are they brewing? Is it integrity? Those relationships are making more relationships. And what have I contributed? How is the ring of my being singing through others? Have I shown up with my many selves? What did I perceive I needed to edit to be in communication with you? What did you need to edit to be in relationship with me? What did I cut? What has been trimmed so that I could fit you into my illusions? What will the wounds say? How will they brew with time? Are we teaching each other to hold back? Your rage and your wonder, your scratching at life's scabs and still your soothing fingertips Grace, both are consequences of time across generations, navigating this crazy world. Talking about a future, don't stain it with any utopia, terrorizing the necessary complexity. Would it help if I said, we're learning together? 
shaping each other. Unsliced, integrating, reunion. To be uncut with you. Uncut in our uncut world. Mm. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Tatiana, did you want to share? Mm. Yeah, just soaking that, that in. I, I, I think it would be so lovely to just stay here and keep talking. And I also would like to make, give everyone an opportunity to, to, to have some connecting. So mm. I think what we'll do now is move into breakouts. Um, so we can sit with the hold the poems and take these with us into small groups. Um, and the question that we will give you is what is resonating? And what's coming up for you? What questions are arising? Dialogue with you, Nora. Whenever you're back on the other yeah. side. Whatever people need is, yeah. we're here. Mm -hmm. But what I would love for you all is, is in your groups, think, Bring, come back and be prepared to share um, what is resonating from this uh, dialogue discussion, this beautiful poems that uh, for me, and it just sort of created a deepening and I have many questions and, and uh, so please be prepared to come back to share um, as well. We're just welcome back everyone we were just saying how we wish we had many many hours to to sit with nora but what i'd love to do with the time that we do have is um if you're comfortable oh are we waiting for folks to land in here but if you're comfortable um there's one of two ways that i'd like to invite you to share one if you prefer to write in the chat box and share what uh came out of your group what's resonating uh with you as a group individually or what questions you might have, or if you're um, courageous and comfortable, feel free to maybe raise your hand because we are such a large group. And uh, I would love to invite you to unmute yourself and to share a little bit. And we have Nora, well, we have Nora here. Maybe Fallon and someone can help me keep an eye on the the raise hands, the raise chats. So what, uh, when we sent you off into the, the groups, it was what resonates with you. So we'd love to hear back um, what the dialogue and discussion was about and what resonated with you uh, in your small groups. So I see Sapana and Nadia have hands up. Okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> so maybe Sapana, go ahead. There we go. Hi, it's, it's Sapna, the middle A is there to trip everybody up. Um, <laughs> So um, what really resonated with me was the juiciness of all of these things that you spoke about, Nora, the, the whole piece about like where is care located and how we are actually transformed within it. Um, and it, to me, it's very much about like that's a, that's a, and this is not to do with man and woman, it's to do with the feminine, right? And I, and I feel like that's such a feminine part of us where we are uh, tending to and we are caring for and caring about um and 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 then also the whole piece about art like mm -hmm. yes absolutely and I feel that into the chat and I can I have to say it again absolutely there's some things that cannot be said in, in other than poetry um and and how it's in fact dangerous to try and express it in any, any other way I love that um and and we also spoke in the group and I'm not speaking for the group but just some things that were were raised was how um, you know, how when we, when we're able to be attentive or take care of what's within us and take care of um, the others as well, right? Like in the group. Um, yeah, so that and the whole piece of like the intersection with all of that with art. It's just, it, it was so alive for me. Thank you. Yeah, you're, you're so, I think you're, you're, you're so on it. It just, and where are those, where are those balances? You know, all I can say is that we don't know and we're going to mess up and you're going to give too much and you're going to get depleted. And then you're going to say, oops, 
And then, you know, there'll be other times when you feel like I wish I had given more. I really wish I had been able to give more there. Um, so, you know, it's not, a, it's not a perfect formula. It's just life. And we do the best we can in, and that's what we do. So I wish that there was a, a way I could say, well, you know, you're giving too much when, or that, you know, but no, nope. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you gave too much when, you know, it happened already. <laughs> and, and then you're tired. But but also there's something learned there. So, you know, I I I'm more afraid of of caring too little than I am of caring too much. I think in my life I I can look back at moments when I gave too much and I think oops, but the times when I gave too little. Mm, that, that one's hard. Beautiful. Um, Nada, I see you had your hand up and I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Uh, yes, I'm not sure. Can you see me? Okay. No, no. you just vanished. No? <laughs> you just oh. You vanished. Oh. oh, no. Okay, so I think that the camera on the computer is not working. So apologies for that. I'll just put my photo back up and at least there's something to look at. Um, so um, in the in the group, um, I had shared something that resonated with me, which was you said um, it would the idea of seeing the complexity in each other, mm -hmm. being able to see the complexity. And mm -hmm. what happened in my head was I said that's interesting, because when the word is used, especially for women, when the word is said this way, she's just so complex. Yeah. <laughs> that is not a positive word usually. Yeah. And there was just something about this parallel use of this complex and complexity. And I just found it, I started to play with the word and I just wanted to share that because it was just something that I picked up. And I said, that's interesting that it's mm. not used in its beauty form. It's used as a judgment form in, in, in some cases. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to share. That's so great. I love that. It's like, take it back. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm taking back my complexity and I'm wearing it beautifully. <laughs> exactly. Love that. <laughs> and, um, I think, you know, when in the study of, of um, how to put this health, Okay, what, what is a healthy system? It's, it's not really as hard to articulate what an unhealthy system is. But when we start to try to say what makes a system healthy, that's where we kind of run into like, well, it's, a, it's, a, well, it's, 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 a, it's just healthy, you know, like, what's that? But one of the ways in which um, you can look at a healthy system, whether it's a family or your body or a forest or an ocean or a society is in their relationships. And that the more relationships that are in, in interdependency, the stronger the system is. So the complexity is the more complexity is actually more health. Now, what we, we sometimes get into looking at problems that are complex problems that are also woven in to multiple relational processes. And so those problems are healthy. It's just that they're problems. Right, so when we look at, at, at things like corruption or addiction, um, these things are, are deeply connected into multiple contexts of life. Um, when we look at, at other forms of complexity that are, I mean, that's what, what gives a meadow life? What gives a forest life? Is it in the flowers? Is it in the soil? Is it in the bacteria? Is it in the butterflies and the insects and the birds and the, 
Where's the life? Well, it's in the relationship, right? So when, when those multitudes of relational process are nourished, you get a complex living system that is full of vitality. So, yeah, I love being complex. Mm. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks so much, Nadia. Um, Alyssa and then Renee and Sue. So go ahead, Alyssa. Thank you. We had such a, a beautiful sharing and I just want to just express my appreciation. I think one of the things we learned about um, systems is that, yes, it, it is about like strengthening relationships, strengthening connection. We had beautiful sharing about, about that. And um, a word that came in really strong for me is, um, is love as a, as a life force. Mm -hmm. And that um, when you can really connect with love, then you really see where does, where can these like relationships and connections happen? And um, it was really quite, um, quite alive in our sharing. And I really just feel that as, you know, this is like the spontaneous movement that a system can make. Um, mm -hmm. And I just wanted to, yeah, share mm -hmm. that something that came out there. It's really important that it's a spontaneous thing. Yes, and it feels like that's what love love is capable of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have this story where this friend of mine that I work with quite a bit, his name is Philip Gademi, and he was a student of my dad's. And my dad was one of the people who helped sort of bring systems theory into the world, but Beyond that, he was actually just this really incredible being. Yeah. And, um, and Philip went to my dad and he said, my dad was his professor and he said, I, I'm gonna do a big project and it's gonna be on uh, culture planning. And my dad said, yeah, you know, you should definitely do that <laughs> and really throw yourself at it. Really put everything you can into it. Until you come to the point that you realize you can't deal with love in that way. Mm. And, you know, I think that's really, it's, I, I, I'm hoping you're following me on that one. Because, you know, this, this way in which love moves and moves us and shifts the responses that we're capable of making. Mm. um is is beyond prediction mm. and you can make all the models and linear strategies you want but because people love each other and they you know they they that love can make them fearful that love can make them violent that love can bring you know love isn't always just love love is also a completely trans you know love is is curiosity, love is remorse, right? Mm -hmm. That moment when I feel like, oh, I wish I had given more, right? That's love. Yeah, and, and we were also talking about exclusion, like what part does love play in, in exclusion? Because as we were mm -hmm. saying, it's not all rainbows and butterflies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, sometimes our love might bring us somewhere. This is maybe also a systemic movement where our love, our love brings us somewhere that actually excludes yeah but somehow it's that you know that that attraction of life life i mean vitality itself is like just love right it's just uh -huh. watch it happen these things attracting and relating and entangling and moving together and making things mm. yeah and it's so tempting to think, oh, we could just, you know, envision this perfect future. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Thank well, you. Alan, thank you, Alyssa. Renee. Yeah, thank you so much, Nora. Our, our group had um, felt like so much resonated. And I think that um, the there was so much depth in everything you said that I actually have a question <laughs> to try to understand the piece better. 
um, because I wanted to sit with every concept for a lot longer than the few minutes that we heard about it. But I think before asking one thing that really hit me was um, the different types of care um, and how to, see, how to understand care, because I think, um, you know, under, moving from, we talked about moving from the personal and the individual into the collective, um, for me, it took asking for help mm -hmm. to be able to understand that I was a part of the collective <laughs> and I was an interdependent mm -hmm. being that was not put on this earth only to serve other people. I really had to sit with your question of like, is, is, is my question going to be that I didn't give enough? <laughs> Mm -hmm. I don't know <laughs> that question, like, maybe, can I find that anywhere? Because I always give too much. Mm -hmm. What I needed to do was ask for help so that I could then start caring for the people who are closest to me, including myself. Mm -hmm. And that's helping me understand the difference between extractive care, something that takes out of me, mm -hmm. right? Versus care that gives back and continues to nourish. So yeah, in that journey, I was, all of us really were resonating with the quote from your mother-in-law, mm -hmm. both the quote and the way that you shared the story of her, how sober she was when she shared the quote with you. Um, and afterwards you talked about how it set you free. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you could say more about how, like what that idea did to kind of help free you. Um, okay, so that's interesting. Um, I was caught, okay, in a script that wasn't my script. I don't know where I got that script, but it was a script that had a predefined version of what self-care looked like. And in order to achieve that self-care, I was in a, in a really nasty little position where I felt like I was failing at self-care and failing at caring. I was failing at both things. I couldn't get either one of them right. And, and so I was super double stressed. On top of that, I had these two babies I needed to deal with, right? And so I, I really was able, I was set free in that what happened was I said, okay, how about we just don't expect this to be easy? How about I expect to wake up tomorrow and just give it everything I can? And I don't even expect 15 minutes to sit down. And what I found was that actually I got my renewal in ways that were completely different than that script. I did not need to go off to a yoga class or have alone time or have that perfect bubble bath or you know, any of those things. It wasn't any of those things. And so what I started to find that I could draw my strength from, it, it was you know, things like sitting on the earth like taking my kids outside and just being on the ground or um, playing music, being around art, letting there be art around me. Um, and, and there was no, I didn't need to stop what I was doing to do that. I needed to weave them together. And I would never have found that if I kept thinking, oh, this is what self-care looks like. I have to go get whatever it is that people do. I got to get a pedicure in order to know that I'm in self-care, right? And that just stressed me out because who's going to take care of the kids and what am I going to do this? And then I feel guilty and then, oh my God, then the, you know, whatever the event was, it didn't go very well. And I'm uh, racing home to be with the kids. And I'm like, well, really? This is like really not working for me. <laughs> So I was failing at both. Um, so I, I had to find, um, I had to find the ways in which my renewal happened, and it wasn't on anybody else's version of it. Thank you. It was also complex, right? <laughs> it was complex, right? Yeah, I'm complex. Yeah. 
Right. So, so following that, you know, prescription was just, it was a frustration. And I think that my mother-in-law got that. She was like, what are you asking? What are you saying? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Um, if, if there's others that would like to share, maybe share in the chat box as well. I want to um, just in the final before we move into closing, mindful of our time together. Um, Grandmother Diane, during the break, uh, when folks were in their uh, triads, you had uh, shared a quote that resonated with you, which stemmed to some really awesome dialogues and nuggets, little nuggets of wisdom from both you and Nora. And I'm wondering, I'd love to close on that little note before we move into a closing tonight so that everyone else could, could hear the wisdom that was shared. Can I invite you maybe to share uh, about the quote you were resonating with? Well, there's been so much. Just let me tell you, this is just like a fertile garden here. And, um, you know, this last little bit of talking about, you know, mother-in-law's guidance and advice. There's nothing like having community of women who can uh, lift, lift each other up. But those words in the last little bit of love and gratitude, I think really resonated with me because Sometimes we focus on what is what is the tough part of life as opposed to what are we really grateful for, you know, and, you know, that's that opening Thanksgiving address when it's given in its in fullness and entirety is uh, those are medicine words that it wasn't anything that, that our people made up or said, hey, let's just do this. It was spiritually given. And when things are spiritually given, you know, the nourishment that comes from that is profound. Um, so when I was listening to Nora talk, you know, before you went into your, your breakout groups, one of the things that really stuck with me was, was a line from the poem. And it said, talking about a future, don't stain it with any utopia. You know, and I think... I think a large part of what, what Nora was, was messaging us for was, you know, the, the care of self and family and community, the care with love and gratitude and bringing that, that the power of love and gratitude into those systems. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to heal us and heal our children and grandchildren and great grandchildren, because that, that whole power of love is infinite medicine in the universe. So then we started talking about, you know, that's what I mean, you know, it's a fertile garden. And we just took off after that. And it was such a, a great conversation. So um, I'll pass it back to you, uh, Tara Lynn, if you wanted to say anything. You know, that, that led us into the thread and I'll, I'll pass it to you, Nora, but the thread about these systems and about how we've been sort of conditioned to think about healing and well-being and the process and, and, and you know, the pathologizing process of, you know, what those systems have been built on. And, and you spoke about the White Tower. Maybe you could just speak a little bit to that. And uh, you also had shared about, I wrote it down, you said, uh, if we are going to change um, relationships, we have to change communication. And you're like, that's it, that the very seed of everything. So if you would like to speak to those two things on the closing, that would be wonderful. Oh my God, I have one minute to do that. No, um, take your time. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I have to say first in, in, you know, in gratitude, to the um, many wonderful beings that work in the medical world and in mental health, um, that I, I feel so much gratitude for their work. And then I also want to say that we have to pay attention to the roots. And, um, and there are some dangerous roots there. Um, for the most part, the history of, uh, you know, the, the sort of 
late 17th, early 18th, 1800s, when the industrial era was coming into play. This is the moment when it became, when psychotherapy, when psychology came to be. It's the moment when economics came to be. It's the moment when statistics came to be. It's the moment when this whole sort of entry point of how do we fix people so that they can fit into the machine happened. And um, I mean, I got in big trouble this year because I threw, I threw a stone at, at that glass house. And um, I was really surprised at how deeply attached um, so many people are to, to these ideas that were actually produced through doing research that pulled people out of context and labeled them and measured them and, you know, judged them and this, this horrible criteria that was eugenics. And, and I mean, it's right there at the bottom of this thing upon which the tower of some beautiful thinking and great ideas and wonderful people and all sorts of intent toward healing has been built. But then, you know, when you start to, you know, ask, I, I, I was sitting in a, in a family therapy course. I work with family therapy all the time. So, you know, this is not something that I, it's not something that I, I want to um, throw stones at, but what I do want to do is call attention. I was at, at a session in Singapore and there was this incredible hot shot from the West talking about you know, how to make diagnosis. And I'm sitting there and the room's filled with these you know, beautiful young Malaysian Islamic women. And I'm looking at these descriptions of these behaviors and how they become these diagnoses thinking, um, you know, we're in another culture here. These behaviors don't necessarily come about in the same way that they do in other places. So are you sure that this produces that and that once they have this thing that's identifiable, they should take that pill? And recognizing this, the, the, um, the problem, recognizing the problem, there it is. And so much has been built upon it. And I, I just, I, you know, I, I think in, if we're going to really go forward, we're going to have to actually start asking some questions about how that research was done in the beginning, upon which so much is based. Do we really want to make people more efficient? How, where is healing in that? And what can we learn from other cultures and what they know about healing? Um, you know, there's, um, there's so much, there's so much possibility that's wide open and out there. And it's just not in the familiar territory that we're used to working in. And it looks different, it smells different, it walks and talks differently. It, does, it doesn't have the same kind of goal-oriented strategic process in it. And so, you know, it's unrecognizable. If you're looking for that, you're not gonna find it. But, but you know, healing each other, um, you know, I think very rarely do people heal alone. We need each other to heal. And what does that, how do we teach our children to be in relationship with each other and the world in a way that, that generates healing? Um, and that's a really different path than saying, you know, be sure you go out there and make something of yourself. You know, who are you? 
Where's the edge of you? Oh my goodness. Oh, so many things to um, discern and to uh, dive into um, from this beautiful uh, conversation, this beautiful time that we've had together uh, this afternoon, this evening. And uh, I'm so grateful uh, to you, Nora. Uh, we say Walalan in my language, which is just acknowledging you and of all the places that you could be right now. And I know you're there um, supporting your mom. You chose to spend time with us. And so immense, immense gratitude uh, to you for, for sharing of yourself. And I know this is the beginnings of a continued relationship with you, uh, of which we are immensely grateful for as well. Mm -hmm. So I Thank would like you. to, um, and also to everyone that uh, joined and participated, I know there's some folks that we didn't get a chance to, but we are going to um, post the link to the lodge at Turtle Island Institute, our virtual teaching lodge. I've been away for a little over a week, so I haven't had a, a lot of time to interact there, but we certainly will post the poems. Many of you were asking about the poems. Um, we'll post it in the lodge. Um, I'm excited to further some of these conversations from these little nuggets that have been floating around uh, the conversation today. So uh, I'll invite you into the lodge um, to continue to discern and to, to think about um, what's been shared today. And I'd like to uh, invite uh, Grandmother Diane Gachendagwas Longbo to, to offer, um, after maybe I'll hand it to Tatiana and then to Diane to offer some closing words. And I wanna thank you all for sticking around um, for the extra little time. I know all uh, time is precious and thank you all for joining us uh, this evening for our second dialogue. So maybe Tatiana and then Auntie Diane. Mm, thank you. Um, I'll keep it brief, but uh, echoes of gratitude to all. Thank you all for joining us this evening and connecting in. Um, there are lots of threads we'll, we'll continue to, to explore together. Nora, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, what a joy, what a gift, what a a lovely powerhouse of, of women to be with, to be sitting mm -hmm. with. Thanks everyone. And Grandmother Diane, to you. Thank you so much, Tatiana. You know, the great wisdom teachers never give you all the answers. They make you think about deep questions and they, they give you the fullness of your own authority to examine those questions and to come up with the answers that means something to you in your life. And so Nora's done that for us today. So I, I know when we meet great teachers that the ancestors are present with us. So I wanna just say some closing words to honor those ancestors, not only, not only for us, um, you know, sitting in this little uh, quad right here for Tatiana and Terrellyn and Nora and myself, but for each and every one of you and those who were able to join us here today, so grateful to you for this beautiful opportunity to share, to embrace questions that sometimes in the busyness of our lives, we don't often have an opportunity to think deeply about. But we come back to source for the answers and the guidance that we need. We thank you today for the ancestors who walked before us and left many tools along that pathway for us to pick up. We're so grateful to all of the red people, the indigenous peoples, not only of Turtle Island and the Americas, but the indigenous people all over the world who continue to live close to their lands and receive so many elements and gems of guidance from Mother Earth that help us on this journey. I give thanks for all the white people who are working really hard to recover their old languages, their old songs and their old ceremonies, and to the yellow nations of people who maintain deep roots in their homelands, to those old, old teachers that gave them their beautiful way of life. And I lift up today you know, the black peoples in that great diaspora of the world now where 
their traditions and their spiritual beliefs are still guided by ancestral connection. So this day, Creator, I give thanks that we've been able to reach each other throughout the world and that we have the opportunity to sit with wisdom teachers. We ask you to continue to watch over all the people who come to our, our time together here and meet, make a covenant to meet for, for the next months together leading into the, the winter of next year. We give thanks that this, this time of coming together is connected to the moon and is connected to that, that great one that gives us so much medicine as female life and female identifying life. And so this day, we give thanks that we have had this opportunity and we ask you, creator, to watch over us, our families, our work, and help our work to manifest in the world and for our relatives to thrive. Nyawa, miigwech. Ulaliok. Oh, nyawa <laughs> goa. Thank you, everyone. And I... I uh, want to just acknowledge one of our elders that sits on our council, one of my beautiful elders, Mig Mahan is here as well. Mm -hmm. And I know I just saw you, Mig. I'm so grateful that you're here with us. And I know this is going to resonate with you. Happy to, to yarn a little bit with you as well. So thank you, everyone. And uh, until we see you again, I hope I see you in the lodge. Uh, I'm rumbling. I got things rumbling inside me. So I look forward to seeing you uh, all there.